right, welcome in. I muted and then unmuted myself and then muted myself again by accident. We are ready to start something new tonight. It's going to be a little odd because we're kind of in between some big games. Um, just finished up uh, earlier this week, Earthbound, for the first time, and uh, it was an enjoyable experience. It's an odd game, but I still liked it quite a bit. Um, and that's not going to be it for our RPGs this year. We're at some point going to be doing Chrono Trigger and uh, potentially taking a look at Mother 3 and the original Mother. Uh, but that'll be a ways off. Uh, in just a few days, we've got the Tomb Raider Remastered Collection coming out, and I do at least want to check out the first one. Uh, I don't know if it'll be a committed full stream from start to finish, but I at least want to take a look at it, so... That's going to be something that's going to be on the itinerary. Uh, and later on this month, there will also be the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth game that's coming out. So uh, should be some interesting stuff this February and likely into March, because I'm sure that uh, especially the Final Fantasy game is probably going to take a minute. But what to do between now and then? Uh, well, I've got a couple things in mind. Uh, there's been a lot of games that I've been wanting to get into that I either played or never got the opportunity to play from like kind of my teenage years. And there's just been a couple things that have been on my mind. A lot of stuff that's kind of more movie related, especially if it was like movies that I actually saw in my teenage years. Uh, so we'll probably see a few <laughs> movie based games from this point forward. But one I've been thinking about a lot lately and I don't even remember it all that well. Uh, is the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring game. Now, this game came out, like, in 2002, I think, uh, which I believe was a year after the Fellowship of the Ring movie uh, by Peter Jackson had come out. This game is not related to that film in any fashion. Uh, apparently, these games were made um, under contract with the Tolkien estate and not with New Line Cinema. Uh, New Line Cinema would go ahead and make their own games later on, uh, and they'd actually skip over Fellowship, so it kind of worked out that way, and they would do uh, Two Towers, which was an uh, action-based game, and then Return of the King, which I think was sort of like a mix of action and, and sort of adventure-ish type, but uh, I never played that one, so I don't know. Uh, but the Fellowship of the Ring game, yeah, this one, this one was an odd one. Uh, it was supposed to be a, I don't know, fairly accurate representation of the first Lord of the Rings book. Uh, and that's not The Hobbit, but of course, Fellowship of the Ring. And I don't know exactly how far it gets to. It's been a long time since I've read the original novels. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is or isn't. Um, seems to me like people don't seem to either remember this game or think too fondly of it, but... <laughs> I don't know. I remember playing it back in the day, and this was probably close to its release. Uh, I think I did play it before I even played the Two Towers game, which um, I own as well, and I remember liking that game a bit. But for whatever reason, I like this one a little more. <laughs> and I think that was kind of more boiled down to the uh, adventure aspect of it. But we're going to take a look at it. Apparently, it's not terribly long. Um, I don't know if they just skip a lot of stuff and a lot of the contents in the book or... If uh, we just get through the events relatively quickly, I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, this is almost going to be like playing it for the first time again, because I remember like nothing about this. I actually saw the uh, the Bakshi film, uh, Lord of the Rings, the animated one from like 1979 fairly recently for the first time too. And uh, when I was watching that, I was like, you know, this reminds me of that Lord of the Rings game I played from the early 2000s. So I guess we'll take a look at it. We'll see what it's like. Um... Again, I hear it's relatively short. If we can knock it out in one stream, that'd be great. But I'm sort of anticipating this taking a couple. And we'll just kind of see where it takes us. I don't know. Surreal software. I was doing a little bit of reading about this game. Apparently not only was it uh, that I learned about the uh, whole thing where it was, you know, made with... Uh, legal rights from the Tolkien estate, but um, apparently the original idea for this game was going to be a uh, RPG instead of an action adventure, but I think they wanted to hit like a broad art audience mark, so they just ended up sort of changing the format. This is well into things too, so probably 
started as that, but not necessarily lasted too long under that concept. Let's take a look at what kind of settings we got. Okay, pretty bare bones. And this game, I think, came out in 2002, so it's probably not going to have a whole lot going on here. Oh, that's to literally save the settings. I thought maybe that was like autosave or something. Take a minute to load up, I guess. See, and that's what I'm saying. You've never seen this before. <laughs> a lot of people don't seem to either they never found this game or saw it or knew about it. Uh, but yeah, it was coming out right when the movies were. So, I mean, you know, intentionally so. I think they were capitalizing on the films and the success of those. Uh, what's that blinking disc? <laughs> like the first, the first three notes, oh, but then they don't go, oh, In the shadows of Mordor, they take another the turn. Lord Sauron <laughs> the one ring to enslave all elves, dwarves, and men of Middle Earth. The free people of Middle Earth overthrew Sauron, but lost the ring. I feel like I need to raise the game volume up a bit, even though it's at 100% on the uh, capture card. Now the enemy has returned, and from his dark tower in Mordor, he seeks his ring. We must find the ring first, and destroy it. But who can bear to carry the ring? The weak would be corrupted. Precious. <laughs> Powerful would become as great a threat as Sauron. But who can bear the ring? I do kind of wonder what the legality would be, because, yeah, it's like, uh, you would think that you could go pretty far Welcome with, like, visuals and everything. Will we have fireworks, elvish lessons, tales of ancient Numenor? Today, we must talk about a shadow of the past. The ring you inherited may be very dangerous. I think that's Tom Kane. Uncle Bilbo Been hearing a lot of him lately. Magic rings, as you call them, were made by elves. But this ring, I think, was made by another. Give me the ring. No! Look closely. I see fine lines. Lines of fire in a flowing script. What does it say? One ring to rule Ooh, them I don't all. see that. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. This is the one ring to rule them all. The ancient kings of elves, dwarves, and men use the rings of power to rule their lands. The Dark Lord Sauron created this ring to rule all the others. When he fell in battle, he lost it. A strange creature called Gollum found the ring and was corrupted by it. Bilbo won it from Gollum, and now it is yours. But the Lord of the Rings has returned, and all his thought is bent on finding the ring. Let's destroy it! It can only be destroyed when it was forged in Mount Doom, the fire mountain in Mordor. Take it there. Take it. No, do not tempt me. If I bore the ring, I would become like the Dark Lord himself. You don't have to wear it, Gandalf. You can just pop it in your pocket. I guard the ring. And I will help you bear this burden, as long as it is yours to bear. I'm a danger to the Shire. I must leave. I could set out on the road just like Bilbo. My dear Frodo, hobbits really are amazing creatures. But you need not go alone, if there are any you can trust. But take care. The enemy has many spies. Uh, uh. <laughs> well then, Samwise <laughs> a weird animation, quote-unquote. 
What are you doing in Bag End? Nothing, sir. Uh, trimming the grass under the window. Oh? The sound of shears stopped some time ago. How long have you been eavesdropping? Eavesdropping? Uh, there ain't no eaves at Bag End. Don't be a fool. What have you heard? Oh, uh, Frodo, D don't let him turn me into anything unnatural. He won't hurt you. Just answer his question. Well, I heard a lot I didn't understand about lords and rings and a fiery mountain. And elves, sir. I had to listen. I dearly love to see elves. Keep it a secret, Sam. Or I hope Gandalf turns you into a spotted toad. I've thought of something better. He will go away with you, Frodo. Me, sir? Go and see elves and all? <laughs> Hooray! But where should we go? <laughs> he sounded so excited, but his face was the exact opposite. I think that's that, um... And you mustn't vanish. God, I can't remember his name. He does the voice of uh, Robin in the Teen Titans, though. Very well, but no later. Make for Rivendell in the east. Menville, I think. Scott Menville. East. I'll tell everyone I'm buying a house in Crick Hollow near my relatives in Buckland. I'll have to sell Bag End. The Sackville Bagginses have been trying to take over this place for years. A shame to let them have it. Indeed. And now I must go. I have much to attend to. As do I. See that Samwise Gamgee does not talk, or I will turn him into a spotted toad. You can trust Sam. Oh, yes, not a word from Sam Gamgee, and that's for certain. Once you leave, travel as Mr. Underhill. The name of Baggins is not safe outside the Shire. And do not use the ring, for it can corrupt the most innocent heart. I understand. Farewell, Gandalf. <laughs> elves! <laughs> I'm going to see elves! Farewell, Frodo. <laughs> I'll return anyway. on my birthday. But Gandalf did not come back, and as the nights grew longer, I decided I might have to leave without him. On the morning of my birthday, September 22nd, I set out for one final stroll around the Shire. I had to say farewell to my neighbors and sell my home to Lobelia Sackville Baggins. Them Sackville Bagginses. Find the Bag End deed, sell the Bag End to Lobelia Sackville Baggins, get the key to Bag End. Alright. Uh, anyway, as we were sort of mentioning before, I mean, there's some things, I mean, I, I would have to wonder, like, how close they can get to things that were in the New Line Cinema version. Oh man, camera's inverted, hate that. I'll get used to it. But, I mean, here's the thing, it's like, everything is... I'd best leave it here until I sell back in. Everything is based off of the novels, um, you know, at the root of it, obviously. So it's like, there's got to be a number of things where you, there has to be some similarities. There's the key. And, you know, it's been a while since I've read the Tolkien novels, but, uh, and I don't remember his writing style necessarily, but, you know, like most novels, especially from back in the day, I'd have to imagine that he was the descriptive sort. And, uh, you know, if you want to try and make something as accurate as you can, I would imagine that uh, both Peter Jackson's film team and, you know, anybody that's making some sort of adaptation, especially in the modern era, especially with how vehement that uh, Lord of the Rings fans can be, um, I mean, I'd have to imagine that they'd try to make things as accurate as possible. So there would have to be some visual similarities at the very least. Now, things like music and stuff, it's a little easier to get around. Obviously, there's no music in uh, a novel capacity unless they added it to, like, a reading or something. Did I get everything I needed? Okay, I think we did. So I gotta sell the, sell the house. But, um, music, yeah, we were... <laughs> Like those those opening notes, da -da -da -da. and then you just veer off in a different uh, <laughs> a different direction entirely. Try to keep away from uh, whatever soundtrack from the films you might possibly have. Good morning to you, Mr. Frodo. Good morning, Sam. 
All ready to set out for Buckland? All ready? Or will be as soon as I tend to Bag End. Lobelia Sackville Baggins is buying the place. You don't need to weed Bag End ever again. I'd like to weed them Sackville Bagginses out of Bag End, if you get my meaning. No, I've got to weed that garden one last time, Frodo. Say my goodbyes to it. Set it to rights before Lotho and Lobelia ruin it. Bag End has the best garden in the Shire, thanks to your work. Oh, uh, no. I I'm sure there are many finer. Oh, Mary Brandybuck said he was meeting Pippin Took at the Green Dragon and invited you to join. They took a long walk out here just for a drink. I wonder what mischief they're up to. Begging your pardon, what sir, mischief? But there's little mischief to be found in the Green Dragon. The Keeper won't stand for it. We will see. Again, I had, uh... I've, I've been thinking about... ...when these pumpkins get turned into pies. More's the pity. <laughs> thinking about goddamn food, aren't you? Um, I've been thinking about this game for a while now, and I, I don't really know necessarily what triggers it, but, um... You know, every once in a while I'll be playing a game and I'll think back, you know, this kind of reminds me of that, uh, Lord of the Rings game I had on PS2, so... It's just, um... Cumulatively, over the past few years, I've just been thinking about it off and on. Um, there's a handful of games I do that with, and, you know, sometimes it, uh, results in something, me playing it again, and sometimes it doesn't, but... We haven't seen this on stream or anything, and I'm sure there aren't a whole lot of people that are playing this, so I figured I might as well just take a look at it on stream. Um, I don't think it's terribly long. How long to beat clocks it in at about uh, five and a half hours for people that uh, don't do like all the side quests and everything. So I don't know. I don't want to say hopefully it's going to be short, but yeah, kind of because I don't necessarily want to be playing it for too, too long. But I think we could probably make it through in a couple streams more than likely. Uh, but the reason I watched the Bakshi film, I, I had... Uh, it, it sort of watching that sort of strengthened my um, resolve to take another look at this game because there was a few things I saw in that and I'm like, eh, it's a slightly different take with Lord of the Rings. It does kind of remind me of the, uh, the video Stand game. Stand and deliver. Excuse me. I am the Dread Highwayman Sancho, and I demand a toll, sir. But I'm a poor country hobbit with no gold to spare. Well, that's what Ted Sandyman said. So the Dread Highwayman had to take a stick out of the mill. Shut it all down, I did. What kind of a stick? You can't catch the Dread Highwayman. This is supposed to be a child. Look how look how big his head is. I got a stick too, apparently. I was gonna see. I think there's that. Look, oh my god! <laughs> and then you could see a visible seam down the middle and I know a lot of games did that you know for symmetry and everything but holy shit that's scary looks like a toy head but like his head is like a third maybe even a little bit bigger than Frodo's maybe he'll grow into it he'll be like an exceptionally large hobbit hello there Hal hello Frodo Hello there, Hal. Hello, Frodo. Okay. <laughs> Great exchange. Oh, look, I could throw rocks. Well, you know, we might miss the, uh, the soundtrack from the films, but I do have some little sound bites here that, uh, you know, we could play if we ever feel like we need to bring it up again. They say a film is only as good as its soundtrack. Mill. I feel like in a lot of cases, lot especially with Lord of the Rings, it's probably true. Hello, Ted. I wanted to say goodbye before I... Can't you see I'm busy? Actually, no. You seem to be just standing about. Well, <laughs> if you knew about mills, you'd know I'm trying to locate a very important metal pin that must have fallen out of my mill wheel. Is that why the mill isn't working? Never you mind about working or not working. I've sent Mugwort to Bree for a replacement. 
I'll let you know if I see it. What does it look like? <laughs> if I haven't found it yet, there's no way you can find it. But, uh, it looks like a plain metal pin. <clears throat> now, good day to you. It's actually registering as quests. There they are. Missing metal pin. Return it to Ted. Actually, I don't know where that uh, sack fill baggins is. So. Bust these open. Somebody stuffed it in one of these barrels. I don't know. Uh, the reason I watched the Bakshi film, though, is a long-ass story, but I was listening to soundtracks for the Star Trek movies, and particularly the original series movies uh, that had come out in, like, you know, the latest, I think, was, like, the early 90s, and then um, back before that, up to, like, the 70s and such, so I was listening to some of those, and then there was a soundtrack I had noticed. Um, it sounded distinctly different because... For a number of the soundtracks, you had Jerry Goldsmith uh, and James Horner, I think. Both of them did two um, uh, two movies, and I think, uh, yeah, there's six movies altogether, so they, they took the bulk of it. So, you know, a lot of the soundtracks for those Star Trek movies all sound relatively the same, but there was one I noticed that um, sounded distinctly different, and I really liked the main title track, and I, I always liked it, because I'd always seen those those movies as a kid. But um, I took a look at the composer, and it was done by Leonard Leonard Rosenman, and he was um, the composer for Star Trek IV: The Voyage Home. And I'd always liked that main title track, and I was listening to the rest of that. There was a, a number of tracks that were like I think there was a couple in there that were like contemporary, because <laughs> that was the one where they go back in time to uh, modern day, which at the time was in the uh, late '80s. Um, but Hello, Milo. Hello, Hello, Frodo. Seen any elves lately? I'm afraid not, I'm sorry to say. What about trolls? No trolls either. Good. It's about time you found your hobbit sense again. <coughs> you know, some say you're as mad as your uncle, oh. carrying on with that old wizard and all. Hardly. I see. Well, at least they have something interesting to talk about then. Good day. <laughs> yeah, Frodo just isn't confrontational at all. Uh, but anyway, Rosenman, he... Uh, did the composition for that track, and then I noticed that there had a listing of some of his other stuff, so I was taking a look at it. One of them went back to that, um... Home of the Gamgees. Will Sam miss it as much as I'll miss Bag End? One of them went back to that Lord of the Rings movie, the Bakshi film, and, you know, I had never seen it before, so... I didn't know what the soundtrack was like, but I, for on a whim, I just turned a couple tracks on, and I was listening to him, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> he kind of reused the same composition... Uh, that he did in the Star Trek movie for the um, Lord of the Rings several years prior. Uh, so that was kind of funny. I mean, it happens a lot with a lot of different composers, but you know, it is what it is. If you get a good tune, might as well put it out there. Uh, but, but regardless, I decided, eh, you know what, I'll go take a look at this, see that, uh, the the see that film. Took when he began his adventure long ago. So anyway, decided to watch it. Interesting uh, as it was, uh, it's it's an odd film, and they they cram so much into like two hours. It's surprising, they get pretty much all the way. If you compare it to the Peter Jackson films, they pretty much get content from Fellowship all the way to Two Towers. And I compare it to the Peter Jackson films because I don't remember exactly how the um, how the books went again it's been it's been a long ass time it's probably been i've seen the movies r repeatedly the peter jackson films but the um lord of the rings trilogy of books i've only read once and that was kind of close to when the movies were uh coming out so uh it's it's been a while probably close to 20 years <laughs> so um yeah, those aren't exactly fresh. I don't remember, you know, what all Two Towers included. But I did, um, surprisingly, you know, well, I guess not me, but uh, I was, I'm trying to start the sentence. Uh, after watching the Bakshi film, I'm just surprised that they were able to cram in 
as much as they did, obviously they skipped a lot, which I'm sure a lot of Lord of the Rings fans weren't too uh, pleased with, but um, regardless. I was still surprised that the film wasn't as poorly paced as it probably could have been. A lot of times when you take uh, a lot of the scenarios and stuff from novels like that and you try to cram it into a movie, uh, especially once you're familiar with it, like the source material to some extent, you can kind of see how the pacing can get a little muddy. Um, and when you cram a lot of information into a short amount of time, stuff can feel rushed. And it did, but at the same time, it was sort of surprising how the, the pacing of the movie didn't seem to be as rapid as it probably Mr. could have been. Market. This square will be brimming over with the freshest crops. So at least they got something sort of right. But again, they, they did skip a lot of content. So a lot of stuff wasn't uh, left to sit on for very long either. It did seem like some of the characters as well did not have a lot of time to shine as they would have otherwise. Hello, Lobelia. They had stretched Wait, it the out into two movies. Lazy Robin or three, well, excuse say. me. Now about Bag End. Never you mind all that. There are wolves in the Shire. I'm sure the Sheriff is keeping everyone safe. Sheriff. Sure. I haven't told him about the wolves yet. Go away, Frodo. I need the Sheriff. Just ring the warning bell. If he's anywhere in Bywater, he'll come running. Don't just hang about then. Ring the warning bell. Damn, I gotta do everything in this town, don't I? I don't know where it is. Apparently the original idea for those Bakshi films was to do two though. So I guess they did, uh, oh, maybe this is it. I guess they did, um, they were planning on doing Two Towers and Fellowship in one movie and then I guess they would have done Return of the King all in one. Yeah, I can, apparently I can't interact with it, so. See if I could do this instead. There, I've rung the warning bell. Now what's going on? I don't hold with reckless bell ringing. I rang the bell. <laughs> the reckless Billy bell ringing. There are wolves in the Shire. Oh, is that all? I've heard that rumor, but I reckon no one's seen these wolves. Not even Lobelia. Oh, if any wolves approach the Shire, the Bounders will chase them off. Just as they chase away foxes and such. I'm glad the Shire is well protected. Now, if that's all, I've got a mug to return to in the Green Dragon. <laughs> is that good enough? Well, someone finally came to his senses and rang that bell. Now we'll have safety and order in the Shire. I do hope so. Now then, what did you want to speak to me about? Make it snappy, I have a lot of things to tend to. It's about Bag End. You said you wanted to buy it. What? But I thought you were lying, you deceitful boy. I believe that when I have the deed in my hand. Did you bring it? Here's the deed to Bag End. Oh, I can scarcely believe it. The deed to Bag End? I shall need to remove a few belongings. I'll leave the Bag End key with Master Gamgee of Number 3 Bagshot Row, if you don't mind. What? Gamgee? That dirty potato grubber and his son might plunder all of Bag End in the dead of night. Good day, Lobelia. Yes, <laughs> yes. A Just don't acknowledge her. day indeed. My sweet little Lotho will be so happy. Bag End at last. Oh, why you consort with that kind, I'll never know, Frodo. Having farmers and dwarves and wizards for company and never inviting your own flesh and blood to tea. Honestly. I can see why. Also, even when Jennifer Hale is putting on a uh, accent or whatever, it's very easy to spot her. I guess sort of like Kane as well, because we, we had heard him earlier doing uh, Gandalf. All right, what's going on in here? Merry and Pippin. Apparently in here, so let's take a look. That, that loading symbol is very strange. It, it makes me think that the, the game is like broken or something. <laughs> Why not have like a rotating ring? Probably would have served better. Hello, Frodo. Have time to enjoy a mug with me? Hello, Sheriff. I was Just gonna say, aren't you the sheriff? Off on adventures. What? Adventures? I don't have adventures. Why not? All the great dragons in hiding from the fearsome bagginses. 
<laughs> Don't worry, Frodo. It's just my little joke. Everyone knows you're a respectable hobbit, unlike your Uncle Bilbo, bless him. Of course. Well, goodbye, Robin. See ya. Hello there, Rosie. And hello to you, Frodo Baggins. I wish you fair weather for your journey. Um, where's Samwise? I'll catch up with him before I set out. You will return from time to time, won't you, Frodo? I surely hope so. Well, perhaps you can teach that Samwise some manners. What's he done? Nothing I've caught him at, but he's likely one of those pranksters that have been ringing the Firewater warning bell with stones. If we ever need to ring the bell, Sheriff Robin may ignore it, thinking it's a child's prank. I'm sure Sam would never do that. Perhaps. Well, return as often as you can. Hello, Frodo. What took you so long? Did that sluggard Sam Gamgee forget to tell you that we'd be here? Never mind Sam. What brings you two scoundrels all the way to Bywater? Breakfast, though. We're up to lunch now. Pull up a chair. You came all this way just for breakfast? Can't tell. It's a conspiracy. Don't tell him. Oh, too late. Our conspiracy is unmasked. May as well tell him everything now. Since you'll be walking past old Maggot's farm, we thought we'd have a go at his garden again. Three is company, just like old times. Remember those mushrooms? I remember his ferocious dogs. I believe Frodo's afraid. Are you afraid, Pippin? I'm never afraid, Mary. Those dogs are all bark and no bite. Old Maggot threatened to show me their bite. Only because he caught you. Well, just be careful this time. Remember the smell of those mushrooms cooking? I do love mushrooms. Then it's settled. We'll meet you at Maggot's farm. Oh, okay. Think about that Bakshi film. Again, though, it's kind of funny how it ended up working out. I think that was a theatrical released film, but um, that one covered Fellowship and, and Two Towers. But then there was that, uh, there, was, there was the other animated movies that kind of fell into the whole Tolkien thing. Um, the Hobbit and then coincidentally The Return of the King. So it ended up that everything got adapted to an animated film when all was said and done, but I, I believe the the Hobbit and and the Return of the King they weren't even like direct to video or anything. They were like TV movies. Um, actually, that probably would be better than <laughs> direct to. Uh, uh, was there even like Beta Max at that time? It was like the late seventies. I don't know. Maybe that wasn't a thing back then. But yeah, they were they were TV movies. I remember seeing a bit of the Hobbit one. That was very very strange. But I never watched the thing entirely. Um, but, I mean, he kind of got it all filled out, even though the tone sort of didn't really match up all that well. I don't know how well of an adaptation the, uh, the other two movies were. I don't even know who directed those. Um, Bakshi famous for his sort of more adult-oriented animations. It was sort of interesting to see him do something a little bit more kid-friendly. I guess technically Hello, the Lord of the Rings books are for Good children. To see you up and about again. I thank ye. I'm fit as a horse again. Folks will be calling me well preserved, like they do your uncle Bilbo. Bless him. Glad to hear it. <laughs> well preserved. This noble tea I've been drinking. Good. Well, I'm off to my old bones ain't stiff and sore, and that's a fact. It's a wonder. That must be very special tea. And now I have to not special at all. The herbs grow wild in the Northlands. Parsley, pine needles, and king's foil. I had four bundles of herbs until that Sancho Proudfoot took them, scattered them all about. Perhaps I can help. Good lord. I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I could, could do all these. I don't know that I want to. I, I could see why the, uh, the hours were increased by the time uh, you were doing the completionist run on how long to beat. We still gotta find that missing metal pin. Oh, we gotta oh, we gotta go back to Bag End to get the ring. Four healing herbs in Green Hill Country for old Noakes. All right. And I'll see what I can do, I guess. Look at the expanse of this. Oh, sorry, are these llamas? 
guess it could be goats or sheep or something. <laughs> they look a little more long-necked. I guess in uh, in the Tolkien books, they had like weird animals. Not everything was normal. They are needy people. Somewhat expansive. I don't know that I should be going out this far. Especially if I gotta like load everything up again. Well, here's Green Hill Country, the Green Hill Zone. Here's one of those packets of herbs Nook spoke of. All right, well, at least the pick upable items are uh, glowy, so. Not too hard to miss. Hello there. Good day, lad. You're a <laughs> what was that look he gave? <laughs> He's like full of sass. Frodo. Frodo and there he goes again. Live in that grand place atop the hill. Bilbo's place. How you been, Bilbo? Frodo. Frodo, right. Well, not time to chat. I'm off to Bray. On an errand for Ted Sanderman. To get pot for the mill. Have a safe journey. Thanks, Bilbo. I'd rather not go, but we need that mill, and Ted says he's too important to go himself. I was actually looking at something else, so I don't know what that guy was talking about. What did he say? <laughs> uh, good day, Bilbo. Uh, no time to... Oh, he's, going, <laughs> he's going to fix the mill, I see. He's that guy that Bree was talking about. Well, I don't know how big this area is, but if I could get all those herbs and then give them the old man on the way back, I guess that'd be preferable, but I don't necessarily like want to go over several areas. Because then I gotta walk it all the way back and then we gotta load it up and everything. It's not the most ideal of circumstances. I guess it seems a little bigger uh, than the previous area though, so... Don't let Farmer Maggot's dog spot you use rocks to distract the dog. Okay. Boy, if I had the ring... Oh, shit. <laughs> that didn't work out. If I had the ring, I could just hide myself. too dense. I can't. All right, there he goes. <laughs> I can't see past it. Uh, that should have been all of them, right? All right. Also, if that pin was supposed to be somewhere, I don't know why I'd be way the hell out here, but um, unless it was somewhere along the way, I don't think we're going to be picking that up anytime soon. You would have thought, especially as early as it was, they probably would have left it somewhere 
easily accessible, um, but I guess not. Oh man, well, going back to speaking about unfulfilled sequels and such, the, uh, I think that Bakshi film wasn't exactly a big moneymaker or a huge success or anything. It was interesting. Um, you know, back then I felt like it was more commonplace to accept rotoscoping. You know, even Disney was doing a lot of rotoscoping at the time with their early films from like the 30s into the 60s and such, but um, you see a lot of the behind the scenes and everything, them taking recordings of whatever they might have. What's up, Ikiri? Thank you for the lurk. I appreciate it. You know, just drawing over it. Um, I feel like when you got into like the 80s and 90s and such, especially when you had rival companies starting up, Amblin and all that. I played my share of pranks when I was Sancho's age, but I never took an old man's medicine. That's a bit of an odd one. <laughs> but anyway, uh, once you started to get to like the 80s and then into the, like the Disney Renaissance and everything, I feel like that sort of became less commonplace to do the whole rotoscoping thing. Uh, which most of the, I mean, you could tell like a lot of the uh, Bakshi film and a lot of Bakshi's films in general use a lot of the rotoscoping technique, but, um, there are some instances where it's like, especially with that movie, <laughs> they didn't even bother. I like when it's just like a, a load of people on set and they just kind of like slow the frame rate down. <laughs> I don't know if they're like taking frames out of the film. Um, and then I just put like a green filter over it. I'm like, ah, that's good enough. It's that's your animation. Hello, I, uh, young Baggins. I have I punched him in the face. You. Thank you, young Frodo Baggins, for bringing me these herbs. Please take this as a token of my gratitude. Ooh, what is it? Oh, I just got more mushrooms. I've been getting all sorts of mushrooms. I don't need any more. I don't even access the mushrooms. Oh, there they are. I've got 31 mushrooms on hand. All right, cool. Well, I think they're supposed to heal you. So if I get in any trouble, I got plenty to heal from. Um, but anyway, you know, the whole thing with the Bakshi thing, I don't, I don't think... Uh, it either made enough money to warrant a sequel being made, but I'm pretty sure they had planned on doing a, a second one again. You know, it would have covered the events of Return of the King. Similarly with this one, this game, uh, I believe they did plan on having a sequel. Um, I did read a little bit into it. Apparently, whatever they were working on wasn't exactly shaping up. <laughs> I think the, the parent company was like, yeah, it's not exactly shaping up to our standards of a Lord of the Rings game, so uh, we're, we're deciding to can it. Uh, but yeah, it would have been interesting to see kind of their take on it. I actually would have preferred to have a action-adventure-oriented uh, Two Towers game as opposed to like the pure action one that we got. Um, I think EA made that. The Anyway, the New Line Cinema version with the, the actual like film-based stuff. But yeah, it was kind of cool to play like moments from the movie and such, but... I don't remember the uh, gameplay for that game being uh, incredibly deep or anything. Can I walk into that water? I guess not. But they did end up making other games. I think whatever this company is um, that had gotten the rights from the Tolkien estate to do Lord of the Rings games, they had done um, that Hobbit game, which looked odd. Actually, it looks fairly similar to the, uh, the t made for TV Hobbit movie. We're talking about the animated one. Um, but they had done that, never played it. How many lucky wishing stones are at the bottom of this well? It looked a bit odd to me, so I never really gave it a try. Uh, I think they had an RTS game of some sort on PC, uh, which. The Warner Brothers, I think, who's got the rights to the uh, New Line Cinema, I think they ended up doing one as well, so. That one probably had gotten him beat out eventually. Um, but I think there was a, that RTS or I guess it could have been an RPG. I don't know. Something like that. But they had one of those, the Hobbit game. It's time for me and the ring to leave Hobbiton and begin this journey. And I want to say, I think they might have had the, the MMO. 
Because there was a Lord of the Rings MMO. Let me take a look at that. I can just pull that up. But yeah, I want to say that was one of the ones they did. Uh, let's see here. Now I'm curious. Okay, so the developers were Surreal Software. The publisher was Black Label Games. So that was that. Um, and then they did, let's see. It says they were doing it. Okay, I guess the parent company, Black Label, and this one, they were under Vivendi, which they ended up merging with Activision. Hmm, so it's like way deep into the rabbit hole we go with this. <laughs> but yeah, the, I, I want to say that they did several, several other games. Lord of the Rings War of the Ring was the one I was thinking of. What kind of game is that? What is that? Oh yeah, it is an RTS. So they did do an RTS game. Um, oh, and they did the Lord of the Rings Middle Earth Online. Which, that might still be going, actually. Let me see. I think it is. I remember seeing an expansion for that. I'm like, shit, that game's still on? <laughs> and it, it doesn't have anything to do with the film versions, so it's completely different. But there was a expansion for that released as recent as 2021 jesus christ that game came out in 2007 it's still getting work done on it i don't know who owns it i mean i guess vivendi which and you know get all these mergers and everything activision blizzard must be part of it now so there's a there's a lot going on but uh yeah that uh that's it probably was the most successful venture out of all of them uh, i don't think any of the other ones really got anywhere near as much success Anyway, is that it? Did we get everything? I still don't know where that pin is. Take the bag and key to Gaffer Gamgee. Number three, bag shot row. Take the one ring to Rivendell. Oh, okay, so easy. <laughs> Guess we'll be on with it then. Do I do I have the uh, option to use it? The ruling ring of power forged in the second age by the Dark Lord Sauron in the fires of Mount Doom. Oh yeah, you can wear it. Pretty nifty. Later that evening. Took him like five hours to get out of the house. <laughs> it's a bigger drop than I was anticipating. Boy, look at that moon. A oh. rider, all in black. No, Mr. Baggins has gone away. Left this morning. Why did Baggins go? Why is none of my business? Or yours? Where did Baggins go? Well, that's no secret. He's walking to Buckleberry or some such place. Is this place far from here? Yes, quite a ways down the East Road. Never been so far myself. They're a strange lot in Buckland. <laughs> Just casually conversing with him. This very odd looking man on a black horse. No, I can't give no message. Now, good night to you. Evening, Master Gamgee. Good evening to you, Fredo. A peculiar rider came asking after you. I don't wish to make his acquaintance. Nor me. Sent shivers up my back just to hear his hollow voice. Where's Sam? He was waiting for you, but that dreaded Pippin Took came to collect him. Said they would meet you at Maggot's Farm. There's something about a shortcut. What are they up to? 
they didn't say. But Pippin seemed quite pleased with himself, and Sam was none too happy about it. He better not be up to mischief. Well, here's the bag end key for Lobelia. I guess I'll meet Sam at Maggot's farm. Good evening, Master Gamgee. And he's gone. Meet Mary Pippin Sam at Farmer Maggot's farm. Avoid being detected by the black... Oh, shit. <laughs> I was reading the thing. No. No. Dark Raider has caught you. The One Ring has been taken and returned to its creator, Sauron. Your quest has failed. Oh. Oh, that's it? I don't even get a... <laughs> I don't even get a continue option? Well, how the... Uh, <laughs> wait a second. I wasn't even aware like that we were in a situation where I could potentially be harmed. <laughs> I can do all that shit all over again. We've been streaming for like an hour. <laughs> Granted, I, you know, I've been listening to a lot of the dialogue and mucking about and stuff, but still, that was, you know, a sizable amount of content. How do I? Okay. So, uh, all right. You know, my mistake. <laughs> this is a game from 2002. I guess I just kind of assumed that there'd be auto saves or something, but apparently not. No continue or anything either. I just get booted right back out to the main menu. I don't even remember where any of this shit was. There's the deed. All right. Sp Speed running time. We're gonna see if we can get through this fairly quickly. I think skipping all the dialogue, if it does give me the option, which God, I hope it does, uh, it's probably not gonna be too bad. I'm probably not gonna go and uh, get the uh, do the side quest stuff though. We're probably just gonna hit the main points here. Good. Okay. Thankfully, we can skip the dialogue, so there is that. Honestly, they should have popped up, like, the, the game should have paused, I feel, <laughs> when they pull up the uh, quest reminders or list or whatever. The same path Bilbo took when he began his adventure long ago. But at least now we know. I don't know if there's like multiple save slots or anything, but you could potentially, depending on where the save picks up, I don't know if there's like a checkpoint system after you save or if it puts you immediately right where you uh, ended up saving. But that could potentially be bad for us, depending on what happens, especially with the, these games and, you know, they're killing you off in one single instance. Might not be so great. I don't think I had to go to the Green Dragon Inn necessarily. I mean, you know, took a peek at see uh, what uh, Mary and Pippin were doing, but uh, that didn't seem to weigh in too heavily on any of the actual mandatory quest things. Will I see another springtime festival around this Maypole? Got it, Frodo. Hello. There. <laughs> I like how the the sheriff doesn't even walk up to you. He just exits from the bar, shouting at you from across the way. All right, so you make it up for lost time. It wasn't instead of that far back, I guess, but still, Jesus. Gotta be careful. You never know when death's gonna be coming for you. I'm gonna say that there was a version of this game that I think was for 
don't think it would have been for the DS because I don't think the DS was necessarily out at the time. It might have been for like Game Boy Advance. But I'm sure it was awful. <laughs> but uh, there was uh, multiple versions of this game. I think they, when they were thinking about doing the uh, sequel, I had read that they were going to put in more characters. I think you were going to at least be able to play as uh, Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas. But I don't know if it was less restricted to those three or what. With this game, I remember being able, and I don't remember how frequently it popped up, but you could at least play as uh, Gandalf, I think in the Mines of Moria? I, I feel how like... Many lucky wishing stones are at the bottom of this well. I feel like he was playable at that segment, and then like several times over you could play as Aragorn. I don't remember if those were fun <laughs> segments or not. I remember... Uh, Gandalf's were a little weird. He had some like magic casting thing that was sort of interesting. And he could also move blocks. I think that was a big part of it. He was the block mover, the designated block mover. But otherwise, probably not a heck of a whole lot going on. I think it's time for me and the ring to leave Hobbiton and begin this journey. I do too. Just grab my traveling chapstick while I'm at it. All right, no side quests. Don't think we're going to get a hell of a whole lot out of them. It's not like uh, they have any bearing on the main quest here, I don't think. But before I jump over this wall here, I think I'm going to make a save. Should I actually take a look at the manual to see what the controls are? Because <laughs> I don't know if there actually is a way you can like crouch or hide or something. Um, we see that the ring it makes you invisible, but I doubt that's going to be good when you have the uh, Black Riders coming after you. The Nazgul. The Ring Wraiths. Preemptively spamming the uh, start button. Let's see if I can skip this. You're sneaking to avoid detection, press lightly on the left analog stick to sneak through rocks to distract the black riders. Okay, so similar situation that we saw like in uh, Maggoty Farm. Oh, did he see me already? I figured I was safe up there on the hill. I wonder if he can hide in like the shrubbery. A rider. Evening, Master Gamji. Okay, I guess not. No hiding spots for us. Yeah, this ain't uh, no Metal Gear. I'm tempted to save after, like, the dialogue sequence so that we don't have to sit through it, but, um... Evening, Master Gap. I'm like hesitant at the same time. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we can, we can do another save slot.
God damn it. I made it pretty far. It's talking about like a shortcut or something. I don't know where this shortcut is supposed to be. But you would think like once you get to a bridge or something like that, you'd have to distract the guy to make sure he doesn't uh, come after you. Sneaking like while well, they're coming close helps. This hobbit can't swim either. Shit! <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long they're going to be distracted. I, I got them to the, uh, the thing, the, uh, mill, but. Make a save here. Just get me like a tad closer. See if we could like save scum this or something. It's a weird way to put it. <laughs> Notice the terminology on there. Change save device. Why not just like switch memory card? That would make a little more sense, I think. Cool. I did it. God, the uh, inverted sticks are really messing with me when it comes to the um, first person view mode. It's kind of sh shitty. Just a bit. Okay. <laughs> I'm making a save. Make a save also, it takes a bit of time too. You'd almost think I'm like uploading to the cloud or something back in 2007. Oh, oh no, the wolves! I'm done for! Hold on, Robin. Frodo, look out! I thought you said like the people on the edge were supposed to be guarding against these things. I'll save you. Your purity has increased. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean for me in a gameplay mechanic? Ah, uh, Frodo, I am in your debt. If you hadn't come along, I'd be a midnight morsel for that beast. I'm glad you're all right, Robin. We've not seen wolves for a hundred years. So I hear. Well, it's an ill omen. What could it mean? That I'd better get going. What? Oh, <laughs> right you are, Frodo. And I should get back on patrol. Yes, but tell the other sheriffs to watch for more dangers in the Shire. Yes, of course. I'm still shaking from that beast, you know. I have to go, Robin. His voice sounds familiar. I 
everybody putting on accents and stuff. Sometimes it's uh, hard to tell. Sometimes it isn't, like in like with Jennifer Hale. Easy enough with her, but um, some of these other folk can't quite make it out, but yeah, he sounds like somebody. Close for the evening. Load of horse shit. When did he, uh, when did he get sting? Like, when can I ditch this, uh, stick? Oh, that was, that was, uh, um, Bilbo gave that to him, I think, at Rivendell. Ah, I'm gonna be stuck with it for a minute yet. The one ring? So I think we were better off when I had like 30 of them. Yeah, pop that bad boy on. There you go. Probably still smell you, but. save. There were mushrooms around here. Guess they don't feel like giving to you, not giving them to you at night. And for situations like this, I'd like to turn the camera, like, Another dark rider down slightly. I must stay hidden. still around here Frodo there he is the old sluggard what kept you cousin stop by the green dragon on your way out never mind why but I can't stay I have to leave right now I tried to stop the green dragon and we're coming with you you thought you were so clever but our conspiracy outsmarted you. We know all about the ring and the Dark Lord. So we're going to protect you. But how did you know? How could we not know? With you muttering, will I ever see that valley again? You really have the Sackville Bagginses to thank. I was practicing sneaking up on Bilbo one day when he heard Lotho calling after him. Bilbo put on the ring and vanished. We kept our eyes open after that. We spied on you and Gandalf. How? Well, through our chief Gandalf said they'd be spies. I have to kill them now. And Gandalf did say, take those as you can trust. 
It seems I can't trust anyone. You can trust us <laughs> to stick with you to the bitter end. We've kept your secret better than you did. But you can't trust us to let you face danger alone. Even though we're horribly afraid, we're coming with you. Or following after like hounds. Dogs! No, Sam. Hounds! Maggots! Dogs! They're coming! Rip! Fang! Wolf! Come on, lads! They're an old maggot, too, by the sound of it. So much for stealing... Oh, I know who that is. It's James Arnold Taylor. What's all this chatter at this hour? I think he was doing the, uh, the sheriff as well. Good evening, Mr. Maggot. It's like some of those voice lines. I guess they would probably... Some of them probably sound like Ratchet a little bit, but there's a few that sound a lot like Titus. Or Titus, excuse me. Outlandish fellow rode through here, asking strange questions. Here, who's that with you, Pippin? You remember Mary Adduck Brandybuck. Allow me to introduce Samwise Gamgee and Frodo Baggins. Uh, good to see you again, sir. Baggins. Now, isn't that strangest of all? What do you think that stranger was asking about? He came riding up on a black horse in black cloak and hood. And he asked for Baggins. Oh, that would be a different Baggins. I told him all the Bagginses are in Hobbiton. He says Baggins is heading east on foot. And now Frodo Baggins shows up on my farm. The same Frodo Baggins who was one of the worst young rascals around, I might add. Frodo's much better behaved these days. Where are you headed? To my new home in Crick Hollow. I can Your see goddamn you're business. in trouble, Frodo. You should never have gotten mixed up with those strange Hobbiton folk. I wager that Outlander has come for the gold Bilbo brought back from foreign parts. Well, I think it's time we were going. No, he'll be waiting. You will ride out in my wagon, hidden from sight. Thank you, sir. It's a pity I've been in terror of your dogs. I've missed a good friend. Indeed. Shall we go now? I'll ready the wagon. Farmer Maggot's wagon carried us safely away from his farm and into the like border. Admitting to Boston. stealing his crops. The Black Rider was still thundering along the East Road. We decided to go south and cut through the old forest. Mary had been in the old forest and knew a little of its ways. It's a dark, mysterious place, but not as dangerous as a Black Rider. Gotta stay off those paths, after all. They know those paths. Oh, Mary, Pippin, Sam, where are you? Oi, Frodo! We're over here. And lost by the looks of it, these trees have a mind of their own. Stay where you are, I'll find you. I wonder if we're gonna do Tom Bombadil. It's like almost every adaptation I've seen of uh, Fellowship seems to skip him. My friend that never gives you directions. Where are you? Over here. <laughs> I'll find him eventually, I guess. I'm over here. Actually, there's like a lot of invisible walls. I can't seem to penetrate anything. Entrance, I guess. The forest, there's like macaws or something in the background. It's like making weird noises. It's forest. It's as if it had a mind of its own. Oh, okay. Yeah, that did change. Oh shit, you know what? Oh shit. That's what sees me. Okay. The other thing I forgot to do was save.
We're over here. <laughs> that doesn't help me. Oh. Found Mary. Your purity has increased. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? Does that mean I get more uh, time to wear the ring, even though I shouldn't be wearing it at all? Help me, Mary. Get the shit out of this spider. Come on. Ow. So I wonder if there's a way to, like, fast equip the ring, but it doesn't look like it. Triangle button isn't being used for anything. Might as well make it that. There's guard, there's first person. There's the item pull up. And R1 isn't used for anything either. Unused buttons. There should just be like a quick equip for the ring, especially if they got a meter up there for it and everything. This one is slightly smaller. Shit. Thank you, finally doing something. HP fighting one, but I'm not gonna fight two. this then find was that Mary or Pippin? We found Mary. So I guess that was Pippin that was calling out to us. No clue where he is though, apparently not here. And there wasn't like branching paths or anything, unless it's one of those deals where it like shifts when we walk around a corner or something, but so I called out while we were going down here, but then nothing popped up. Ah. Just have to find Sam then. 
<laughs> I was going to say, and maybe Mary again, because... I don't know, these guys seem to lag pretty damn far behind. Oh. I thought that was like a giant acorn or something. so much, Pippin. Three and one go. Making the most of it now. <laughs> Wait a second. That's some bullshit. <laughs> they put some mushrooms on an inclinable incline. All right. So that was a pretty big dead end. I think I'd be able to find somebody there. The path change. So you can sort of manipulate it, sort of. That's a, that's a little worrying though, because there might be something I missed previously, just because the path hadn't like revealed itself to me. seen it in theaters we had all kind of gone to see it on a whim and it, you know back in the day especially it's, i guess we used to see movies like a lot but if it was something we were unfamiliar with because i don't think anybody in my family had ever really read the books or anything so i don't know why we went to go see it it was sort of like an odd thing hey there's sam but um I guess maybe it was just because of the buzz and the hype around it at the time, because I don't think we saw it, like, opening night. 
Where is this place? Very close to the Withywindle Valley. But we shouldn't get any closer. Why not? The Withywindle Valley is said to be the strangest part of the whole forest. In the center from which all the strangeness comes, as it were. Can you lead us around the valley, Mary? I thought I could, but the way these trees shift about, I don't know. It's, it's like they're leading us there. Mary thought he knew his way around this forest. But how can anyone find their way when the forest won't stand still? Do you know one of those trees stuck a branch out at me? Nearly tripped me, it did. I'm sorry I led us into such a dangerous place, but at least we've shaken off that black rider. I think that's Quentin Flynn. Again, he's doing an accent, but there's something about the cadence. He's a little, he's a little higher pitched than usual, too, but... This came out in 2002. It wouldn't have been too far removed from uh, his breakout role. <laughs> I don't even remember. Now he's, he's done a lot of voice acting throughout the years, but uh, I remember seeing him in the 90s. I think he was the I think he was the Human Torch in a Fantastic Four animated series. Um, but he had uh, done uh, the second Metal Gear Solid game right around this time. But I seem to remember going into the movie and um, being forewarned that it was like three hours long, which was fairly unusual at the time. Nowadays, every other blockbuster movie, you know, kind of comes in at around like 2.45 to three hours, especially if it's like something really, really big. So not as unusual as it was. But uh, yeah, back in the day, that didn't happen too often. There was a few select films here and there. You know, there's some old stuff in particular. I think like, what, like Lawrence of Arabia or something is like three hours. But you know, back in the day, you used to have intermissions, even even at the movie theater, uh, for particularly long films like that. I think, um, I didn't see it in theaters, but I think Titanic, which had come out several years prior, I remember people talking about that having an intermission. Must have nap. It's cool under the willows. <sighs> Less flies. <laughs> Sam and Frodo is still up. They probably should start noticing that. Oh, I don't like this tree. I don't trust it. Hear it singing about sleep? That's not right. It's not right at all. We can't sleep yet. We must get clear of this place. Whoa! <laughs> Just slapped him into oblivion. Oh no, maybe I grabbed him. Attacking his trunk may anger him. Okay. <laughs> ah! Stop! Stop it! You'll squeeze me in two if you don't stop. Okay, so do do we want to attack the trunk or not want to attack the trunk? Oh, you know what? I didn't. I didn't save <laughs> in a while too. I don't know if this is a bad spot or what. I'll try. Wait, what's up, Jubei? Try saving just in case. As we know, this game does not have uh, auto saves. I remember fighting a tree, but I, it's, for some, whatever reason, I seem to remember it being later. I'm just getting double teamed by all sorts of shit. <laughs> you have attacked old man Willow's trunk one too many times. Mary and Pippin have perished. You have failed to save your companions. Like the Chamber of Secrets versus the Whomping Willow. <laughs> oh no! They're dead. All right, so I don't, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do there unless it wants me to escape. Yeah, it does. Like it, it's weird. The save system puts you like right back where you saved. So we got to be careful here. I, 
I am dead after all. I think we can revert to the last save, yeah. Anyway, going back to the movie and everything, it's like, um, yeah, seeing it in the theater at the time, um, there was no intermission. I'm, I'm almost feeling like a, a bit of a surprise. But I think, uh, yeah, especially back in the, in the day, I remember everybody warning, it's like, okay, people. If you think you might have to use the bathroom or something, you better go before the movie starts. But generally, the people get warned that anyway. I feel like that's more applicable to uh, <laughs> women, for whatever reason, can't hold it in. Constant bathroom breaks. I've been on a road trip with women several times. Every couple hours. I guess I can't attack the trunk, but I can attack the hands. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I can't leave. I can't attack the thing. Do I just stand there? Is that what you want me to do, game? I mean, something would be better than nothing. I don't mind when a game is vague, but like you leave me little option in the whole matter. I'm guessing this is what we're supposed to do. We're just supposed to attack the hands. But at the same time, I do like some sort of indication in a video game that, uh, you know, tells me that what I'm doing is effective maybe. I mean, this thing is recoiling like it doesn't like it. But, um, at the same time, I don't really feel like I'm making any sort of progress. Okay, all right, there we go. Oh, steady there, little fellows. Oh, it's Tom Bombadil. He's here. Wow. He's actually in an adaptation of Fellowship. Tell me what's your trouble. My friends are caught in that willow tree. You don't see that? Willow. I know the rhyme for him. I'll chant his marrow cold if he don't behave himself. Well, now, what seems to be the problem? You should not be waking. My friends are being eaten by a tree. Water, go to sleep. Bombadil is talking. <laughs> That's a good song. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Very much. Well, my little fellows, you shall come to the house of Tom Bombadil. Well, I'm good. Time enough for questions around the supper table. Come now and help Tom find lilies for fair Lady Goldberry. After that, we shall sit down to a table laden with cream, honeycomb, and white bread and butter. Sounds... What are we waiting All right. for? The sooner we find <laughs> lilies, guess. the sooner we can eat. Mmm, raw honeycomb. Purity has increased. Find 12 lilies for Goldberry. Okay. Well, off I go then. Ooh, Gaelic flutes. Here, we could play along with this.
Just like we're watching the movie. He's got, he's got a little pep in his step and uh, like his little uh, grabbing the lapels. Some of the animations are a little off-putting though in this game, I will say. There's like some weird like smug look that Frodo was giving off when he was talking to one of these fools, but uh, he hasn't done it since then. Anyway, I was talking about earlier, Tom Bombadil seems to be skipped in a lot of adaptations. Um, he wasn't in, you know, the Peter Jackson movies. He wasn't in um, the Bakshi film. I don't know if there was any other major Lord of the Rings where he's been skipped out on, but I don't seem to like him too much. I think because it's kind of like a weird aside in the book. Uh, so it does feel like it could be skipped out on. But every time, you know, it's brought up, like somebody ends up eventually getting angry about it. <laughs> like he's, he's integral to the story, which I never exactly got that aspect of it. I guess Bombadil's supposed to be representative of something that's higher power creatures or the unknown in, in Middle Earth. But um, I don't know. Again, it's been a long time since I've read the books, so I don't remember what the specific case was with him, but... He was, a, he was a bit of an odd fellow, and um, his presence, in my opinion, wasn't exactly sorely missed when he's skipped out on another uh, adaptations of Fellowship. But, you know, again, I've heard a lot of people say to the contrary. Look at me. Taking on every spider in here. Think you'd rather the blue wizards be touched upon uh, than Tom? Although you don't know if the Blue Wizards did anything in the main story. Not that I remember, but they didn't really even cover the any of the other wizards for a while. That's not what I wanted. I mean, you take a look at the movies and it wasn't, you didn't even get, um, I forget his goddamn name, <laughs> the Brown Wizard, <laughs> until uh, the Hobbit adaptations. Um, but, you know, I remember the other wizards being mentioned at the very least, outside of just Gandalf and uh, Saruman. In the Lord of the Rings books. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Bombadil is a weird person, and, you know, I think it was mostly the uh, vaguity and the um, sort of unknown factor about him that... Uh, was appealing in a lot of regards. Radagast, that's it. I should remember that. It's actually the name of an application I use every once in a while. We had the giant stream of like bird shit on the side, so visually he was sort of unappealing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, I don't I don't remember too much about the film adaptation. What he was who was who who played him? He was played by one of the uh, the doctors. From Doctor Who, I think. I don't remember which one though. I've I've only ever seen the Hobbit films once each, and that was in the theaters. So I barely remember anything about them. I don't remember liking them that much though. The first one I actually thought was alright. I liked the first one okay, but um, yeah, the second one and the third one. The third one in particular a little bit painful. Sure could use my hobbit friends right about now. I hear, you know, now that I've re- or, well, I haven't even rewatched the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but I don't know, I might at some point. Um, but after watching the animated and, you know, playing through this, I'm sort of interested in seeing, um, 
Yeah, and the pale orc, I think, was a little expanded on too, but I don't I think uh, it might have been for the better. But anyway, I've heard for a while that there is a fan edit of the Hobbit trilogy that I don't know if it necessarily edits it down to maybe like one fairly long movie or two, you know, feature length films at the very least, but it's. They edit it out where they edit out a lot of the like really bad fluff and filler and uh, it's whittled down to just kind of like the core stuff that was in the books that was actually filmed. I know there's extended versions of those movies too. I remember, um, I think my mom was the one that got it, but she got me like an extended version of the original Hobbit once and I'm like, oh God, <laughs> like I thought they were like scraping together all they could to, uh, you know, make three movies. It was originally supposed to be two, but uh, I think for like scheduling and everything, they had to uh, walk. It's like a Vince McMahon stride. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, I think they had um, stretched it out to three just because like timing and everything. It was just easier for filming. It cost more, but it was easier for filming than it was to uh, do the filming in two years and meet the goals that I guess New Line wanted. Mostly just interested in getting these lilies. I don't think necessarily we need to fight all these spiders, right? Oh, good lord. <laughs> good luck. Good luck, friends. There was a gang of spiders waiting for me. Alright, well I got the lilies. I got no clue where Tom was headed. He went off somewhere. And I don't know if his like abode is over in that general direction, wherever the hell he was walking. So I don't know if I need to like go to his house or if I just need to find him. strutting off in this direction, but... Not too sure how fast he can walk or anything. Guess I'll go back over here. Kind of past that, like, giant wave of spiders, it did kind of look like there was a, uh or something we might just need to find his house running out of shrooms skip us over there if I like literally had to follow him this winding pathfinding come dear folk laugh and be merry I am Goldberry daughter of the river here's my Goldberry you 
are still afraid, perhaps, of mist and tree shadows. Fear nothing, for tonight you are under the roof of Tom Bombadil. Who are you? Eh, what? Don't you know my name? It's Chick. I don't know her name, but, but she does a shitload of voices, name? and it's usually but like children. You're young and I am old. Eldest, that's what I am. Tom was here before the river and the trees. Tom remembers the first raindrop, the first big people, and the first little people. He was here before kings and Pharaoh White. <laughs> that's how we categorize people here in Middle Earth the big and the little. And before the seas were bent, before the Dark Lord came from outside. His Most notably, she does. So um, over Tom Bombadil. I can't even think of their names. Phil and uh, Lil from the Rugrats. We ate our first good meal in a long time, singing songs and telling tales until late in the night. We slept peacefully and were refreshed enough to continue our journey. Keep to the green grass as you go, lads. Don't go meddling with old stone or prying into the houses of old dead Barrowites. Here's a song to sing should you fall into any danger. Oh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, oh, by water, wood, and hill, by the reed and willow, oh, by fire, sun, and moon. Hearken now and hear us, come, Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us. Okay. Thank you, Tom Bombadil. <laughs> yeah, that's about as much as you can say to that. North, with the wind in the left eye and a blessing on your footsteps. Make haste while the sun shines. Farewell, friends. It was a merry meeting. Yeah, certainly was merry. Oh, let's save before something stupid happens. Also, you found a couple of older books, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. You love vintage, vintage cover printed in 1983 and 84, respectively. I got a couple older ones. I'm trying to think of how old they are. I think they might be 70s. Um, but there was a, a good while where I was trying to find some hard, some like nice hardback um, editions of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I ended up getting the Lord of the Rings one I wanted. I got it for a good uh, bidding price on eBay. It's um, hardcover. I think it's a 70s edition, and it's uh, like a crimson red. It's got all three books. I think it does. <laughs> Pretty sure it's got all three books uh, in one, and it has like a slip case. It looks real slick. Um, there was one I wanted for The Hobbit, and I was very particular on the one that I wanted. Um, I even like looked up like the licensing code and everything for it, and I thought I was getting it, and I ordered it like sort of sight unseen they were using a stock photo for it um and it wasn't the one i wanted the one i wanted was uh for the hobbit was uh it was an emerald green cover with like a gold inlay it looked beautiful uh and i really really wanted that edition um but everywhere that i was looking for that sold it selling it for like prices i wasn't willing to pay and i don't remember what it was at the time it could have been like 50 bucks or something i probably just didn't want to pay it um but i ended up ordering one and it it had the same licensing code and everything from it, but it was a different edition. It was like a later one. I think that was from the eighties. It still looked nice. It was hardcover. It was like the same material that that Lord of the Rings edition I had was, but um, instead of being the emerald green with the gold inlay, it was like a gold with the green inlay. It didn't look as good to me. Um, uh, you don't uh, get why many books have minimalist bland covers now. Yeah. Um, I've never been too keen on a lot of, uh, like modern editions of stuff, you know, even if it's like older, uh, books, there was uh, some decent compilations from Barnes and Noble and I was just getting them even if I had already owned them from other things, but I was getting them, they were, the, it was like these leather bound uh, editions that they had. Um, and those are probably like the newest books that I've bought, um, but very, very slick looking. I, I got the, the works of HP Lovecraft. I remember was one of them. There was a Bradbury, uh, collection. I think there was a, a double edition of uh, Jurassic park and the lost world. Um, put into one. Oh, there was a, an Alice and through the looking glass. Um, I think those are the ones I got, but it was a Barnes and Noble leather bound. They looked real slick. So, and they kind of reminded me of, older edition hardback books from like the seventies and eighties. But yeah, um, even if it's not minimalist, it's just like the, I don't know, a lot of, it was like a lot of modern books in particular, like started looking a little like tacky. <laughs> it's 
So there's something about it just didn't didn't look right to me. So I didn't buy uh buy a whole lot of new editions of stuff. Need more space for shit to buy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not like a huge avid reader or anything, so um, I never really planned on having like a hell of a whole lot of books. I, I have more uh, sort of, I guess, co coffee table books. I'm big into getting art books. I like I like art books and not like high art or anything like that, although I do have some. But um, art for like, you know, behind the scenes stuff, uh, drafts for like films I like or, uh, you know, comics or something like that, so... Um, I do have a lot of art books, so that, that takes up most of my shelf space. But as far as like novels and stuff, I don't have too, too many. So I figured if there was, you know, a few books that I really liked, I'd want to get like the best versions available for them. Uh, which I got a few. There's, there's a few things I got that I ended up liking quite a bit. At least the look of and everything. To recoup my uh, mushroom losses. Although it's, this map is slightly frustrating. It looks like there's so much that you can like walk across, but in reality, there's it doesn't allow you to do a whole lot. Okay, if we're in trouble and we need Tom Bombadil, does everyone remember the song? Repeat that. Too bad we don't have sort of some sort of audio recording device. Man, like almost none of this so far is familiar to me. Like I could, I could get by on my own. I could sneak by a lot of this crap, but um, yeah, it's like I, I don't know if I should, just on account of the rest of the group. Probably not. Wolves just coming out of everything. Unfortunately, it doesn't take too much to beat stuff to death with a twig. Keep up, lads. or anything Even but Tom is cautious about this place it's like um I don't know everything's coming up all at once playing this game I'm feeling like I want to rewatch the uh, original trilogy the of the films and splendid if we keep this pace might as well read through the books while I'm at it tomorrow not soon enough for my liking I don't trust what's hiding in the fog on the Barrow Downs. <laughs> you don't believe stories about old dead Barrow Whites. Not until today, but Tom said otherwise. Tom is the only one not affected by the ring. I wonder why. He was here before the Dark Lord came from outside. 
Outside what, I wonder? And whatever did he mean by eldest? And why didn't he serve bacon, or cutlets, or sausages? I don't like spending the night among these burial stones. They look like giant teeth coming up from the ground. If half the stories I've heard about the Barrow Downs are true, we'll need to keep a careful watch. Enough storytelling. Let's get to sleep. The next day... Sam? Mary? Pippin? Where are you? <laughs> oh my god, they're dead. There's bones at your feet. Where could they be? Sam? Mary? Anyone? Where are constantly you? Constantly blinks out. I find the missing hobbits again. Let's go ahead and save. There's no point in having a party if your party didn't stick with you. fog here is quite thick indeed. Mm, quite thick. Oh my god. I don't think I could fight ghosts. Could be wrong. anywhere down in the Death Valley area. I don't know if that means they're back here where we came from or what. Maybe I should go back to Tom Bombadil's place. Tom. Keep to the green grass as you go, lads. Don't go meddling with old stone or prying into the houses of old dead Barrowites. Farewell, friends. It was a merry meeting. <laughs> I don't like the camera angle. It was very steep. All right, I guess they're not here. don't respawn. The corpses linger, so you'd think they wouldn't, but can't say 100% for sure. You never know if something else is going to pop up. Hole down um, over 
here. Get the feeling like I probably shouldn't jump down that. Look, I can actually hit them. Surprisingly, they don't do a whole lot of damage. lands. far back. Seems suspicious. It takes so much recoil, it's actually fairly easy to beat them, but it's just like the quantity. Too many of them. Wait, how did we get in here? <laughs> Explain this to me. I just walked up a hill and now we're in like some kind of crypt. Guess so. I've got to set them free. Get them out of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is going on? Well, I said it'd take a special weapon. through the map. That might have been intentional. Hard to see that gap. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. A Westernese dagger. A keen short blade crafted by men of Westernese in ancient times. Yeah, 
I don't know if it's working against them or not. Oh, Jesus. I don't think I got hit by him, but maybe the ring. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think the ring might have drained too much life force. I wasn't aware that would happen, though. I figured, like, the ring. I don't know. He, he might have been. He might have hit me. I, I don't think he did, but he might have. <clears throat> but um Sam, Mary, wake up. Yeah, and I know the uh, the ring could just finish you off like that. I probably wouldn't have worn it that long. I just assumed that the effect would uh, stop working. use it more sparingly because I was running around with it quite a bit. <laughs> I think it's glitching out every now and again though. Those menus ain't looking too hot. I don't think I can hit him without the ring on, so I think we have to wait for it to recharge. It charges up fairly quickly, but you gotta be careful because then it'll just uh, like kill you if you're too close to the other end of it. There we go. Maybe. Why didn't we listen to Tom? Wait. Perhaps Tom is near. Oh, Tom Bombadil. Tom he remembers the song. By water, wood, and hill. By the reed and the willow. By fire, sun, and moon. Parker now and hear us. Come, Tom Bombadil. For our need is near us. Well, little friends. Old Tom has answered your call. Get out, old white vanish in the sunlight. Shrivel like the cold mist till the world is bended. Out into the barren lands far beyond the mountains. Come never here again. Leave your barrow empty. Lost and forgotten be darker than the darkness. Where gates stand forever shut till the world is bended. It's on. Thank you, Tom. The spell on this barrow lies broken, and no white shall ever come back to it. I've scattered the barrow's treasures. They're free to all finders. Old Tom has taken a pretty toy for his lady, and here are some fine blades for young hobbits who go walking into dark and danger. It's perfectly clean, untouched by time. Yes, thank you again. They were forged long ago by the men of Westerness across the sea in ancient Numenor. 
They cast spells on their blades for the bane of the Dark Lord. Their kings of Numenor are forgotten now, but their sons wander in loneliness, guarding simple folk from wicked things. I wonder if this blade can hurt one of the Black Riders. Old Tom shall see you safe over the borders of his land. From there you should travel to Bree, a fair village. Stay the night at the Prancing Pony Inn. Fair advice. Lead the way. Ready to follow Tom, then? Indeed. The further we are from the Barrows, the better. Let us speed on our way. Like how he didn't answer the question about the Black the Riders. Stone fields I feel like he was trying to pry him there for some information, but he just wouldn't get any. Home to both hobbits and big folk. We said goodbye to Tom and entered Bree, seeking a warm fire and a door between us and the night. At last we found a cheerful inn with the sign of the Prancing Pony. Oh, the Prancing Pony, eh? Sounds so giddy. But first, we had to wait for the loading screen. Well, that happens, and take a look at some stuff. We surely aren't staying in this inn, are we? Why not? Tom recommended it. I thought we might see about staying with some of the Bree Hobbits. It'd be more home-like. Oh, Sam. This is as good as an inn back home. Just a lot larger. Nobody the wants larger to stay with the hobbits and The larger Bree. the meals. Don't worry, Sam. This will be fine. Maybe Sam can find a tater patch to sleep in. I'll make arrangements with the innkeeper while you three find something to eat. And remember, from now on, my name is Mr. Underhill. Right. Come on, Sam. Pippin. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Underhill. Don't you mock me, boy. God damn, they really are small. stepped on a branch or something. Picard's flute. Oh, the inner light. Uh, there was a... Actually, there was a... Um... Oh, no, it wasn't strictly Next Generation, but there was a, like a Star Trek album of just like a bunch of Star Trek U songs, either from movies or from uh, any of the TV shows. I think it went all the way up to Voyager. I remember uh, my aunt owning it and she'd play the uh, inner light flute song a lot. Is everyone? It's supposed to be an inn, right? Hello. I'd like to give you a word of advice, young hobbit. Oh? There are some dangerous folks about tonight. I hope you stay safe. I'm sure I will. So do I. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> I don't know. Seems kind of suspicious to me. I don't like you hobbits much. Go away. <laughs> he doesn't like you. I don't like you either. Hello there. You best watch Hello. yourself. At your service. Pleased to meet you. My name is Underhill. And how do you find Bree, Underhill? Is it to your liking? Found it on a map. It's pleasant enough. Though it isn't the Shire, or the kingdom under the mountain, I'll wager. You know of Erebor? How I miss my distant home. Soon I shall return there. Once my business in the West reaches its conclusion, I will be glad to be among my folk again. Good fortune to you, Nali. And to you, good Tom Kane you. has voiced like 16 characters in this game so far. And fair. Good evening to you. Pleased to meet you. My name is Underhill. Is this your first time in an inn, Mr. Underhill? No, that is to say, it's my first time in this inn. <laughs> I see. 
Well, if you're planning on staying here, you should check with the innkeep. Wait too long and you'll be sleeping in the stables. Right. Thank you for the advice. Goes by the name of Strider. Yeah, I'd like to check in, but oh my god, look at that tight space that these people gotta squeeze through to get behind the bar. Uh, the innkeep didn't seem to be at the front. I guess he's there now. Hello. I'd like to half a minute, if you please. Nob, where are half with customers? Step lively. Now then, good evening, little master. Balaman Butterbur at your service. What may you be wanting? Room for four, please. You're from the Shire, from the Sandia. We don't get many from the Shire nowadays. Shire. Now, what does that remind me of? Might I ask your name? Mr. Underhill. I'm run off my feet with all these travelers tonight. There's a crowd in the house tonight as there hasn't been in long years. Lucky you're a hobbit. That's the only kind of room we have left. Here's your key then. I'm surprised they have special hobbit Not rooms. Not your footed slow coach. Where are you? Here, sir. Here I am. Where's Bob? Find him double sharp. He's got some ponies to stable straight away. I'll get right on it, sir. You'll excuse me, sir, but I've a party of dwarves to tend to and all these strangers coming up the greenway from the south. Busy days, these. Right. <laughs> now, it was the best party ever. Fireworks that only a wizard could make. <laughs> oh, Bilbo starts a long, boring speech. But he has a trick up his sleeve. <laughs> or in his pocket. Mr. Underhill, I'd stop ever. your friend from Fireworks talking if I were you. <laughs> so Bilbo says to the 144 hobbits at the party, you are one gross of hobbits. <laughs> Everyone's so offended, they don't see his hand go into his pocket. You'd better do something quick. People of Bree, thank you for your gracious reception. <laughs> Let's have a song. And wait, 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 I'm getting to the good part. Very well then, a song. There is an inn, a merry old inn, beneath an old grey hill. <laughs> Get up on that table awful quick. So brown that the man in the moon himself <laughs> down the <laughs> guy down there does not seem uh, amused. Uh, oh. Where did he go? Sorcery! Bah. Conjurous trick, that's all. <laughs> right, and a fine trick it was. What you did was worse than anything your friend could have said. It was an accident. I want a word with you somewhere quiet. Didn't even see him put on anything. And that bottle Hello. is big for like a Who normal person. <laughs> what the hell is that? What do you want? I am called Strider. And if what I say is helpful to you, I want you to take me with you. I would not agree to any such thing until I knew a lot more about you. Excellent. You seem to be coming to your senses again after your accident. Begging your pardon, I need a word. Everyone in this place needs a word. I remembered what it was I forgot. What? About a shire hobbit named Baggins, but called Underhill. Who told you this? Gandalf the wizard. He asked me to send this letter to you in the shire, but I forgot. I expect he'll turn me into a block of wood. Dear Frodo, bad news. You must leave for Rivendell before the end of July. Do not wait for your birthday. I will meet you if I can, or follow you if I can't. You can trust the ranger called Strider, but make sure he's the real Strider. His true name is Aragorn. Don't read that out loud. <laughs> I oh, 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 my name is Aragorn, yeah. Arathorn. And if by life or death I can save you, I will. Yeah, all right. I thought I would have to persuade you without proof, but my looks are against me. I believed you, or I wanted to. The enemy spies look fair, but feel foul. While you feel fair... But look foul? <laughs> um, Hold on. Where's Mary? He's still not back from his walk. Stay here. I'll find him. I'll find him. In one piece or two. I think we finally play as Aragorn here. I seem to remember wandering about the town. Yeah, here we go. Wandering about the town is Aragorn. Oh, 
What you got? He's got a long sword, sturdy blade common throughout Middle Earth, and a bow carried by huntsmen, rangers, and archers across Middle Earth. Nothing too special, though, I see. Sorry, sir. The stables are all closed off. I got to get him clean before the boss has my hide. My hide? What do you want, Longshanks? None of your concern, horse thief. What? You gonna call me a horse thief? I already have. Now be gone. You <laughs> stuck your nose in the wrong place. I've seen you talking to the Shire Rats. You want the reward for backing all to yourself. But you won't get it. I have to kill you. Because the guard does nothing. It does if you're in a very particular spot. <laughs> One last little kick before he died. The corp corpse remains too. And he's hanging on to that axe. Good for him. Nourishing whey bread baked by the men of the north for journeys in the wild restores 30 health. Oh. Well, it's not like we <laughs> we don't measure health by uh, numerics, at least nothing that we could see. I'm sure that makes sense in the game coding, but uh, just tell me like a third of your health bar, or half or something. I don't know what 30 means. Just leaving all this cram out in the open. Is. What are you doing? I forget who was missing. Was it Mary? Ah, there you are, Mary. Who are you? They call me Strider. I am a friend of Gandalf. Very well, friend. What should we do now? Return to the inn and find your friends. Tell Butterbur to lodge you in my quarters. What about you? I think it's time to throw these enemies off the scent. Beg your pardon? I'm going to collect some items to make decoys of you hobbits. You'll see. You must come with me. I'll see you safely back to the inn. I do appreciate it. These streets have suddenly become rather unfriendly. Come along. <laughs> and then wolves just started gathering. Collect clothes, collect melons, collect hay bolster. Collect small logs. Uh, now's not the time for fancy tricks. He like tossed his sword up in the air. These rags will make my decoys more convincing. Sure, I guess I'll pick these up on the way back. Over. Mary, what the hell are you doing? Come on. Don't mind the corpse. You little mouse. Talk or I'll make you squeak. I don't know, no baggins. I swear it. Little mousey's about to get his airy foot in a rat trap. Bold words for a filthy orc son of Mordor. Ah, foil make you squeak too, wanderer. Ah. Oh. The 
Ska vi ta havet? He's like targeting the hobbit. Lay off him. <laughs> Even the arrows. Why are you keeping up with that other one? like special tricks you can do <laughs> like depending on the uh, directional buttons that you press Leave that shit in there. Doesn't need to be swept. Oh. Right, I think it's the entrance to the place. Or maybe it's this. But I can't seem to deliver Mary there, so... I guess we'll go searching for the rest of the decoy materials. We took care of those guys. Guess I'll go ahead and save. It takes such priority that it needs to cancel out the music. I noticed that last time too when we were in the Barrow Downs, I think. The, mu the soundtrack was freaking out. I was wondering if the disc had problems getting red, but... figure it out <laughs> just by touch alone they're like all right I, th I think the hobbits are dead i gotta bother looking
What are you doing out here? That's my business. It's my business now. You'll beg to tell me after my friends work you over. And thus, Aragorn was felled by a pudgy looking dude with a spear. It's gotta be a better method for the uh, melee combat to figure out what it is though. Melons. They will break convincingly in the dark. Can't bust open crates to find the contents of them either. Alright, at least I guess we kind of know where we need to go, maybe. Didn't really seem like there was anything else. Straight back here. This guy's gonna look like Baromir at the end of the <laughs> fellowship. appreciate lock-ons with melee combat for a good while. It's like in Legend of Zelda and nothing else. It sort of worked because I could knock him down. You can't like do a, a downward slash attack though. Oh yeah, I guess I did. Quick reload last time. Um, there's like no downward slash attack, so you could knock him down and then they could plug in like, like an arrow or two in them after the fact. But um, it doesn't doesn't work that great. I feel like the sword attacks, the sword attacks are consistent, but they also open me up to more damage, it feels like. Uh, substitutes for hobbit heads. They will break convincingly in the dark. I so wonder if uh, Mary could follow up on this. 
could provide like a bit of a distraction or something. I could tag team him like I did that other dude. I should, I mean, it's Aragorn, I shouldn't have to, uh... They have any difficulty combating these guys, but... hits, but I'm going to go ahead and make a save here. Actually, I should check because it seems like Aragorn operates slightly differently than melee combat with uh, Frodo, so there might be something I'm missing. or something. Doesn't really look like it. Hey, what's up, Brilo? Hold! What are you doing out here? That's my business. It's my... Doesn't appear to be a lock-on of any sort. Like neat that he could do a move when you're moving the analog stick, but it's also kind of annoying. Because sometimes I just like want to move up close. These small logs will give my decoys convincing arms and legs in the dark. I doubt the gatekeeper will miss them. You know, <laughs> like right from that point, it's like return to the prancing pony. I don't even know if it's worth fighting this guy. <laughs> There's like not, this is, I mean, the game's melee is serviceable for what it is, but also like with these types of enemies that don't recoil like at all or only recoil in like certain instances, it's like it doesn't work out so well. Like, it's good for, like, a quick hack and slash where enemy, if enemies, like, f f fell with every second move or something that you did. But it's like this guy can, like, counterattack and shit. And it's like, guarding isn't good because guarding results in you losing health and then you know, the kick sometimes works, but then sometimes it doesn't. Good luck. I can't even, like, get away from him. Jesus. And then he gets struck with that little pike, and then you end up getting stun locked when you're too close, like that. That's it. <sighs> I wonder if that's supposed to be the gatekeeper. Like, is that the gatekeeper, or is that just like some one of these mercenary mucks? We could just do that. That's fine by me. Hell, maybe we were we weren't even supposed to like kill that guy. What a 
Say, this has been. I can barely keep my eyes open. Black Riders. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> you should sleep, all of you. <laughs> like, why are they floating in we leave nothing? Dawn. Where will we go? Toward Rivendell. But not by the main road. Ah, I should have known. More shortcuts and long delays. The last time we tried that, we were almost eaten by a tree. My shortcuts don't go wrong. Sure about that? Early the next morning, I led the four hobbits safely out of Bree and into the troll-haunted wilderness beyond. We approached the hill that the elves call Amon Sul and that men call Weathertop. Ah, Weathertop. Should be fun. Fun little outing. Strider, what's that light? I'm not certain. It's too distant to make out. But it appears to be coming from Weathertop. It's like lightning. We'll know more once we reach Weathertop. Just head in that general direction. I'm sure we'll figure it out. We need to reach Weathertop's summit quickly. If Gandalf is following, he'll go there to look for us. We might find Gandalf there. The hope is faint, and he's even less likely to find us on the paths I take through the wilderness. Perhaps the Black Riders won't find us in the wilderness either. Frodo, Samwise, come with me. Lead the way, Aragorn. For whatever reason, this part of the game is the one I remember the most. I remember, like, the lighting of it, and almost sort of like the map, how it looked. And then getting up to Weathertop is like the... This and then I think the Mines of Moria were like the, the two places in the game that I remember the most. I wonder who made this path and why. I'm not sure that I like it. It has a, well, a, a rather a barrow whitish look. Stay here and miss the fun of a troll-infested, windswept hill? Well, if I must. Or the barrier. See why they can't come along. Okay, I no longer have a bow, apparently. Fowler looking wolves than before. They like rat tails, too. Oh, there's the bow. I was pressing circle to like try and preempt them a little bit, but I wasn't firing anything. Oh, I got Lambus bread. Delicious golden meal cakes wrapped in Malorn leaves used as whey bread by the elves of Lorien. Restores all lost health. See, you know, that, that, that's a little more clear-cut than dirty. That lamb is spread. One small bite can fill a man for something. For days. Although I don't think that was it. things. Yeah, go get them. <laughs> Fuck them up. <laughs> like little hobbit minions just ran up to it. Started bashing it with their sticks. Oh no, they got daggers now. Enchanted daggers. Back right 
to a hell. So soon? could take on three orcs at once but uh for whatever reason i'm unable to actually uh fight a gatekeeper <laughs> a pudgy gatekeeper yeah, we full-on fight mode now Sam, where's where the hell's Frodo? actually got a downward attack. Oh boy, sometimes shit like works and sometimes it doesn't. Usually it doesn't. Yeah, go get him, Sam.
Jazz hit on that. It's just like Sam's hitbox was so low that it was able to affect him while he was on the ground. Is this it? Have we reached it? The weather top? is so blinding. The ruins of the tower look different from the last time I was here. As if a great struggle took place within them. Look at this cairnstone. There are runes on it. It appears to be a G and a 3. G for Gandalf. And the 3 might mean a date. October 3rd was not long ago. Gandalf was here. If he was, he left in a hurry. Perhaps he ran into trolls, or worse. <laughs> Is that a troll? Well, you sure know how to call him. Got him just by running around and shooting arrows at him. No drops. Look, down there, on the Great East Road. Dark Riders. <sighs> Mary and Pippin are down there. Back to the camp, quickly! Skeleton man. Protect him. <laughs> you hit a man while he's down. Actually, I better uh, 
finicky this game is. Some God of War sounding music. I got just the torch. I I got my cram. Get out of here. Oh shit. <laughs> Where'd you come from? waiting for him to come up to me but all right <laughs> he's like skulking in the background go ahead and clear the way of trolls Stay out of harm's way and stay close to Frodo. I'll follow the best I can. We'll take care of him. Don't Didn't they have worry a pony? That. Bill? Where's old Bill? A knife in the dark. Clear the way regardless. fully paid. I gotta fight this bastard and dogs? Oh shit, you know what? I don't know if I saved it at the beginning of the area. I was thinking about doing it too. It's like I should have saved. those Nazgul again. Oh no, I did save, okay.
wish there was a dodge or something. Cram. I don't know what the, I've been noticing the soundtrack. It doesn't. It doesn't sound bad actually. But I don't know um, who did the composition. I'll pull it up because I just had that page up a second ago. Let's see. Brad Spear was the composer. Um, but I don't know what he's done. This guy's got a IMDB. Apparently not much. <laughs> he's, he's done two things. Customer 152 and Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. also thanked in the credits of Wild Australia, a TV series documentary. But it's an uh, it's an all original soundtrack. Yeah, it's not it's not bad for somebody who has two credits to their name. <laughs> I don't know what, what the hell this guy was doing before. It's like an intern or something. He decided that uh, after this game, the video game soundtracks just was not his calling. <laughs> and apparently neither was anything else. But there's been like some good tracks, like just, you know, ambient. Um, and then, you know, there's stuff like this where it's a little tense. love their uh, cram. Shit. I don't know if these are orcs or goblins. similar to this one earlier. Oh shit, I'm getting double teamed by trolls? They might be able to hit each other. I've seen that enemies could do that. Doesn't seem to be registering on that.
one. Oh, thank God. I didn't use all my Limbus, but uh, we got through it. We managed. Something else saw me too, but I don't know what. Looks like you're howling in the distance. Fancy shit. Oh, good. All enemies have been cleared from the area. Oh, troll shaws. We could have picked a different path, you know. What about pleasant meadow shaws? Was that? <laughs> a rider approaches. So I see. I Navedui Dunadan. An elf. My Govan and Melon. What did he just say? Well met, friend. Cursed you out. Or at least I think so. This is Glorfindel of the House of Elrond in Rivendell. Hail and well met at last. We were told to look for you by Gandalf. No, Elrond received news of you from elves traveling near the Shire. As soon as he learned things were amiss, he sent out riders in all directions. Here. Frodo has a Morgul wound. He must get to Rivendell. Then he shall ride my horse, Asphalot. His pace is smooth, and he'll let no rider fall from his back. Fly! The enemy is upon us! Fly to the ford! Ride on! Norolim! Norolim, Asphalot! <laughs> but, but, but wait. Frodo has to get on him first. Later that day... Oh, there he goes. Can't cross running water. By Elbereth and Luthien, you shall have neither the ring nor me. Probably shouldn't challenge them, Frodo. <laughs> See what they did. Two of them. Hey! What about that whole claim that he wouldn't let a rider fall from his back? I expect he picked it up and Elrond rode on. Of Rivendell. Elrond, the Lord of Rivendell, healed the wound made by the Morgul blade. Frodo awoke to a familiar face. I am here, and you are lucky to be anywhere, after all the absurd things you've done. Then we made it. But we needed you, Gandalf. I was held captive by the treachery of Saruman the White, the chief of the wizards. But it's a shame now we didn't see that. I am free, and astonished that you brought the ring all this way. Hobbits seem especially resistant to the evil of the ring. Thank you for sending Aragorn. I didn't know he could fight ring wraiths. I thought he was only a ranger. Only a ranger? My dear Frodo, rangers are the last remnant of the kings of ancient Numenor, but now your part in the quest of Mount Doom is complete. You shall hear all about it in many meetings. You are to be the guest at the Council of Elrond. Oh, goody. Ow. 
My friends, this is the Hobbit, Frodo, son of Drogo. He has sacrificed much to bring the One Ring to Rivendell. Frodo, these are leaders of the free peoples of Middle-earth. Gimli, son of Glawin of the Dwarf Kingdom of Erebor, where the Dark Lord Sauron threatens invasion. Legolas, son of Thrandul, King of the Wood Elves. They fight Sauron's forces gaunt. in Mirkwood Forest. Boromir, son of the Steward of Gondor. <laughs> the men of Gondor suffer great losses to protect us all from Looks Sauron's like Jesus. armies. Sauron's power is tied to this ring. We must carry it deep into Mordor. Glowin. <laughs> destroy it in the fires of Mount Doom. Destroy it. You never know what these pronunciations. Our greatest weapon right to the doorstep of our enemy? We cannot use it. It corrupts all who bear it. The more powerful the bearer, the more dangerous they will become. I fear to take the ring to hide it. I will not take the ring to wield it. A dark riddle. Those powerful enough to enter Mordor dare not touch the ring. Powerful enough to enter Mordor? All the armies of oh, Middle-earth so going together could not enter Mordor. A small force with stealth may succeed where a large army would fail. Elves have tried to join with dwarves against Sauron. But the dwarves prefer to hide in their dark caves counting their treasures. At least dwarves are not fleeing Middle-earth. But elves are sailing away to the safety of the West during our darkest hour. Enough. I say we use the ring as a weapon. For none of you is powerful enough to bear the ring to Mordor. I will take the ring, though I do not know the way. I think this task has been appointed for you, Frodo. If you do not find the way, no one will. You won't send him alone? No, indeed, since it is not possible to separate you from him, Sam Ganji. Gandalf shall lead a fellowship of free people against Sauron. Nine walkers against Sauron and his nine riders. Legolas shall and be that's for all the Sauron has. Gimli for the dwarves. For men, there shall be Aragorn. He, he agreed awfully quick. Of I, I guess they want to move the plot for along. Meaning too, I shall call for great heroes, like... Merry and Pippin, hobbits of free people too. You cannot begin to imagine the danger ahead. Neither can Frodo, and neither can I. Even the greatest lords of the elves could not force open a passage through Mordor. I would rather trust Hobbit friendship than ancient power. Very well, then. The Fellowship of the Ring shall set forth to Mordor. Huh. Well, there you have it. I see why Bilbo stays here. Rivendell is magnificent. Yeah, where is Bilbo, anyway? I don't think I'll ever have better meals. Ever! You had us worried for a while, cousin. Thank goodness Master Elrond was able to heal that horrid wound of yours. It will be good to have such company on our journey, Frodo. Oh, that is a chair. I came to Rivendell seeking answers about a dream. A vision that said the halfling shall stand forth. Are you that halfling? This mission is so great, and you are so small. When you saw fire and lightning on Weathertop, you saw the effects of my battle with the Ringwraiths. Had I been three days later, I would have met you. The time has not yet come for you to leave Rivendell. Oh, when is that time coming? Renewed shall be the blade that was broken. The crownless again shall be king. The Elven Smiths have reforged Narsil, the blade of my ancestors. Uh, already? You have done me a great honor. You do us honor to carry it against our common enemy, Aragorn, son of Arathorn, son of the kings of Numenor. It shall have a new name, Anduril, Flame of the West. May it see the end of the Dark Lord, and then see you safely back to me, my love. You have my thanks, Arwen Andumiel, and my love. My Govanon, Menon. She just called you a melon. Elrond chose your companions well, Frodo. We shall not fail you. Well met to you as well, friend. Your path will be an arduous one, Ming Bearer. May the stars shine upon your face. They're already calling me Ring Bearer. My father, Glowing, traveled with your uncle Bilbo years ago. The dwarves of Lone Mountain still revere Bilbo, along with our greatest heroes. 
His bravery helped win back our mountain home from the dragon, Smaug. A most honorable hobbit is Bilbo Baggins. We have learned that the strange creature called Gollum told the Dark Lord that Baggins of the Shire took the ring. Gollum was held captive by the Wood Elves, but he escaped. He is still seeking the ring. I'll be sure to kill that bastard when I see him. Your journey shall begin soon, Ring Bearer. Rest now. Did we get to see Hello, Bilbo? Bilbo? Oh, there he is. Looks like we'll be going soon. I wanted to stop by and say goodbye. There you are, Frodo, my lad. I've some gifts for you, for use on the road ahead. First, there is Sting, the blade of an elven prince. You'll need it, I wager. This is a Mithril shirt from the Dragon Treasure. Mithril. Stronger than any steel. Thank you for all you have done to help me. Help you? I've brought a terrible doom upon you. I would take the silly old ring myself, but without it, the years have caught up with me. I'm not well preserved anymore. As you once said, the old that is strong does not wither. You should heed your own words. Ah, yes. Take care of yourself, Frodo, and bring back all the news you can. I'm writing a book about your adventure. Take care of yourself, it's Uncle Bill. It's called The Hobbit. I'll bring back all the news I can. And old songs and tales as well. It was December when we set forth on the road to Mordor. Traveling through the ancient land was weird of Holland, they had, like, we were beset on all sides by Sauron's real power. world monsters. Birds and beasts and even weather could be bent to the wheel of Sauron. The Dark Lord hurled a raging snowstorm as we tried to cross the great mountain Carathras. We forged on until an avalanche forced us to quit the mountain and seek another path. Carathras. If we get to play uh, Gandalf, which I'm pretty sure we do at some point, uh, it, it better be soon. <laughs> Running out of time. Corathras has defeated us. Should we turn back? There is no safety for the ring. Not even any snow out here. Where do we go? There is another path. The mines of Moria. That is a name of ill omen. But in Gondor, we will have strong allies. The enemy expects that, so the ring must not go near Gondor. I shall follow you to Moria. And look upon the great underground city of Khazad Doom. I will go, but I say to you all, beware the secrets of Moria. I will not go, unless the vote of the whole company is against me. The ring bearer's voice should be heard. I do not wish to go, but I do not wish to forsake the council of Gandalf either. We must reach Moria, and soon. Gandalf speaks true. Our troubles may get worse, and sooner than we like. So was there an Xbox exclusive Lord of the Rings game? You recall playing it in the shops? Um, no, I don't believe so. You're talking about like the original Xbox. This game was on multiple platforms. I'm pretty sure there was an Xbox version. So if you played like a fellowship type game, then probably it was probably this one. Um, the, and, but this was the one that was handled by Vivendi. Um, and I think they had all multi-plats. I'm pretty sure the uh, the EA stuff did too. The EA anything that was published by EA at the time was um, um, the New Line Cinema, so it was based off of the Peter Jackson films. But these were just uh, with the rights of the Tolkien estate. I remember some giant bee in the Shire? Okay. <laughs> I'm wondering if that's this one, because I don't remember. I mean, we just, we did the Shire level. I don't remember there being a giant bee. Oh, was it the Hobbit game? It might have been the Hobbit game. That was on, uh, that was another one that was handled by Vivendi. So that was the same people that did this one. Um, and the, that one was multi-plat. I'm pretty sure that was Xbox. And um, actually, I think it was on GameCube and... Something else, and oh, PlayStation, obviously. Um, 
I was about to say though, I think like every time I look up GameCube games, I, I swear to God, I, maybe it's the Xbox. I don't know. Every time I look up either Xbox or GameCube, I forget which one it is, but like every time that regardless of what it is that I'm looking for, that Hobbit game always pops up. <laughs> it's like everybody wants to get rid of it and tags it under every applicable name under the sun. But yeah, every, like when I'm looking on eBay, it's just like it's always popping up. I think I think that might have been it. That came out like a couple of years after this one, I'm pretty sure. Because that probably had more to do in the Shire. The Shire was a real, well, I don't know. We spent like an hour getting through it, but I was like doing all the dialogue and stuff. And the only things in the Shire were the ring wraiths and God, I don't even think there was any spiders. Just like the dogs that you had to avoid, but there, was, there wasn't really any combat situations. Also, yay, we get to play as uh, Gandalf. Gandalf. The hell is that? <laughs> One of the ten games on Xbox. Xbox had an extensive collection. A uh, wait, the cordial of Imla Imladris, a powerful restorative drink made by the elves of Rivendell, restores 100 spirit. Ah. And here we have spells. Uh, fiery Blast projectile of fire engulfs a single target and burns it. Uh, health is fully restored. And creatures that are hit with this magical assault become the targets of their own kind for a brief period of time. Cost 20, Jesus. Oh, and lightning, bolts of lightning, which can strike multiple victims. Staff Strike, wave of force extends outward and an expanding ring damaging all enemies within range. We'll just stick with the, uh, the fiery blast for right now. Where are we going? <laughs> I don't know. Something about this, his posture when he did that. <laughs> like, eh, fuck you. <laughs> he puts like zero effort into it. Got a hell of a knockback on it, though. Can I, like, do it? Oh, you can. Cool. Okay. Like a downward stab. But he just, he, like, sort of digs his, uh, staff into him. I got some more midivore. inside your body. Must be magic. Oh shit, we got trolls. Thank you. 
more potent, I guess. Jesus. Nice. I did like in the Hobbit movie. I don't actually don't remember Gandalf being a too much of a character outside of the first one. But I did like in the uh, that one Hobbit movie that he was a little more proactive, I think, in combat. I saw him use his sword a little bit. I think I'd have to rewatch because I haven't seen those in a while, but I, th I want to say like in that, um, I don't know, maybe he did or maybe he didn't, but in the Lord of the Rings trilogy of movies, he like he had the sword out. I remember him wielding it, especially in the mine scene, but he, he never like used it. I don't think he ever saw him like actually strike anybody. Um, if he was doing anything, it was usually like staff related. out on no oh, <laughs> I felt like two feet even still it just looks so low effort maybe it is oh. we have come to the we just popped in here here, the elven land of Holland is. <laughs> Look at this friendly bunch. There is a gate here. Wait, where's Legolas? Those doors are not made to be seen when shut. Behold. Oh, there he is. What does the he wasn't there before. It reads, The doors of Dudin, Lord of Moria. Speak, friend, and enter. What does it mean, speak, friend, and enter? If you are a friend, speak the password to open the doors. Do you know the word, Gandalf? If I am allowed a bit of I peace, need to be a bitch, Baromir. Do you know the word, Gandalf? And then this thing just came out and attacked him. You know what? We haven't saved in a while. Oh, and we're playing as Aragorn suddenly. We haven't saved since the Troll Shaws. on 
I fail to see how, like, trying to strike at this thing would work, though, unless I could actually step into the water. <laughs> this is a jank game. <laughs> the camera is is the worst aspect of of it so far, though. I feel like in a lot of situations, it does become a bit of an enemy. At the very least, the uh, auto targeting seems to be relatively sound. Let us rest while we can. How long will it take to get through this place? I cannot say for certain. Three or four days march providing we don't get lost or run into trouble. Trouble? Uh, what kind of trouble? Orc trouble. Moria is vast and deep. With luck, we can avoid all the orcs. Too deeply and too to greedily. Perhaps you would have preferred to remain behind with that thing in the lake? Uh, not me, Mr. Gimli. Not that thing or those wolves. I'll take my chances in here. pretty damn late I think I'm gonna end here um, I was just seeing how much of this game is left because I was like if if it like if there's just Boria left and the rest of it's like a cutscene then I might as well push through but it looks like we have Moria and then Loth and it looks like it's fairly extensive there's like two ball bosses or something and like several different areas Lothlorien and Anduin um, I guess that's it but um, it looks like there's still a grip of game left, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and then we can come back tomorrow, or I guess technically later tonight, and uh, see if we can't knock this out. But yeah, I don't think there's too, too much left, so. Uh, but, I don't know, there's something about this game I think is relatively charming, um, <laughs> despite it not being like all oh, that great but i don't know I, I like it well enough and the fact that there isn't really any other fellowship games uh, i think there's something slightly special about it but uh maybe that's just me um but we'll go ahead and end it here i think that's gonna be it reminds you of the classic harry potter games yeah a little bit I, i've never played actually the classic harry potter games but there's a couple streamers i've watched that have played them and there's something, um, you know, it's sort of like that action adventure. Thank you. <laughs> there's like there's something about that, like action adventure, like early 3D kind of game feel to it. It's not perfect, but it's playable. And there's like weird little oddities about it that you know, it doesn't make it like a boring experience, I don't think. It's like, it's just, it's got just enough variety and enough like oddness to it where it's like interesting to keep going. 
at least in my opinion. But um, yeah, this it's surprising. It's, it's surprising that this game was even made. It, it's it's very strange. Um, <laughs> like you think that if there was a fellowship type game at all, it, it probably would have been handled by you know the people that whoever owned the New Line Cinema rights, and you know it would have been done by the EA crowd, but. Well, this was done by Vivendi and whatever developer they chose, and it was done like with the Tolkien estate only. And feel the same way. You want to play it? Oh, it's fun. You could probably pick it up for pretty damn cheap. I remember getting this back in the day. I got this at a video store, um, and it hadn't been too long. I think I had gotten it. It came out the same year that the Two Towers game came out, which was that. That was that action game, and I remember. I remember getting that like close to launch. I think uh, a family member had gotten it for me. It's like a, a gift. And um, I got to say, I don't know. I remember, I remember liking this game a little bit more. <laughs> I, I'm sure that the Two Towers game was probably more polished. But, you know, it was just a straight up action game. And there wasn't much more to it. But like this with its sort of action adventure feel to it. I just have, I have, I have fond memories of it. And replaying it, I could kind of see where they were coming from. It's, it's not a great game, but there's something about it um, where I could see where I, I have like more nostalgia for this as opposed to the Two Towers game. They both came out in the same year, too. You could tell there's like a huge difference in quality, but still, um, something, something about this is a little more charming, I feel. So we'll come back to it tomorrow, and I will probably be wrapping it up because there doesn't look like there's like a ton, a ton of... Um, content left so should be pretty uh should be pretty quick i think um and then yeah and then we got um tomb raider coming out i think i'll probably if i it, I'm, I'm more than likely going to finish this tomorrow so if it's super short i might start up one of the other games i was thinking of um which is going to be a movie based game uh but i think we'll kind of flip flop between that and then the tomb raider uh remaster remake whatever but I think that should be good until we get to uh, Final Fantasy VII later on at the end of the month. But I don't know. I had fun. Thank you guys for joining. I appreciate all you here. Uh, super late, so I'm probably just going to end it. But um, thanks for being here. Good chatting with you all. Jube, as always, good seeing you. Good chatting with you. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you guys on the next one. But until then, take care. See you next time.